everybody sees me here, <laughs> like behind us. And uh, I'm Yasmin Naomani, a postdoc fellow at the University of California, uh, at Berkeley. And uh, today I'm going to talk about how to combine storytelling with web archives. So hopefully we can generate something cool, like the theme of the conference or the spirit of the conference. And uh, uh, out of, you know, like this pouring web archives. So I'm going to start with uh, a story here. So if you recall, at January 2011, something big happened in Egypt. It was the Egyptian Revolution. And at this time, I was here in the USA starting my PhD. And, uh, but I was, you know, like able to follow everything that was happening at this time because everything started on Facebook and, uh, uh, and social media and the web. So I was able to witness everything like was happening there at this time. And my son, Yusuf, who's in this picture, he was two at this time. And apparently he had a, a you know, like very short uh, memory and he wouldn't like remember anything of what was happening at that time. So I started to worry like how he gonna know what what was happening as I'm living it now. I wasn't in Egypt and I was like very sad that I wasn't there, but I was able to really see everything, all the stores and from, you know, like uh, all the sides because we have over there, like we have like different sides, like what's happening here in the election. So uh, I won't explain this uh, very much. Now you understand, you understand what I'm talking about. So um, I started to think like, how can I help him? And you know, like when, his, he and his generation like to know what was happening uh, when they grow up. So honestly, I started myself like generating some initiatives for you know like archiving some stuff about the Egyptian revolution. And also I found that there are other initi initiatives uh, for documenting the Egyptian revolution. Okay, so I'm fine with that. And several studies and books like appeared afterward and cited these repositories but these repositories were gone. Like the whole repositories of like videos, images of what was happening in Tahrir Square and everything in Egypt, like they are totally uh, unavailable now on the live web. So uh, how many of you have heard about uh, the Internet Archive? Okay, great, and archive it. Okay, so <laughs> for, for those who don't know what's archive it, it's a subscription service. Uh, from the Internet Archive that allows people to generate uh, archived collections uh, that follow specific theme or about specific events. For example, there is, an, uh, there is a collection at Archive it about the Egyptian Revolution and luckily I found uh, that uh, some of these repositories that were gone from, from the, the live web, they are archived on Archive it. So yeah, archived collections are important for the future generations. Um, I know that some of you told me, like I have heard this, uh, like uh, using archive it is not easy or using web archives is not easy. And actually I have done a study on this and I discovered that the people, they, they don't go and navigate web archives easily. So, uh, so yeah, after, suppose that Yusuf after 10 years, he would know about archive it and he would go there and try like to type uh, some like term, term, uh, like some terms like Egypt revolution to to look for something about the Egyptian revolution. So this is the interface uh, of archive it, and here I just like have list of collections. And okay, he will be presented with different collections about the Egyptian revolution. So there are like three or four collections about the Egyptian revolution. So I'm going to pick one of them that I see that this is the most relevant one based on the description. And by the way, some of these collections, they even don't have any descriptions on what inside these collections. So I pick one of them and then I pick the first URI. Okay, suppose that I'm Yusuf and after many years, I, I, I wasn't like there during the Egyptian revolution. So uh, I, I'm going here just to understand what was happening and I clicked on a page and then this page, okay, I'm presented now with another list of like dates. So these are different copies for, for the, uh, the URI I choose. And suppose I'm going to like click anyone randomly and then I'll be presented with this page. So 
for understanding what's inside this collection, I have to go through all of these pages actually to understand what's inside this collection. So understanding the content of these collections is not easy for regular users. So um, we, we tried, uh, you know, like uh, after I joined my PhD, I, I tried first to like uh, apply the uh, uh, conventional methods, visualization methods on these collections, but it was really hard to, you know, like when, it, when the, the problem comes to like thousands of CDRIs and then thousands of copies for these your eyes and you want to visualize them all of them together to understand what's inside the collection it's really it's really hard so we have to think about some other ways to understand the collection so we thought about storytelling and here I'm not talking about like stories as it means in the literature so I'm talking about it like as uh, with its loose uh, like context in the social media as it's used and uh, actually I have here like stories here for all the previous talks so this is what I'm talking about so stories, storytelling become like very popular in, in social media and you know, it, it has been like used uh, now because of the sheer volume of information on the web. So for example, like Facebook look back, they are able like to summarize your uh, like a year or something in just like one minute video. And uh, there are, you know, like many uh, services that allow you to summarize and select and pick and choose representative videos or tweets to generate narratives or stories. But these storytelling have uh, limitations, so let me show you. So this is uh, as Egyptian revolution story on uh, a platform called Storyfy. And Storyfy is uh, one of the most popular storytelling services. It allows people, sorry, can I get water? <laughs> it allow people to generate uh, narratives uh, like out of social media content mainly or any web pages. I think most of the, jur the journalists use Storyfy uh, right now. So um, because it's very easy uh, framework, allow people to drag and drop resources and generate like big narratives about a specific topic. So uh, this is suppose that this is uh, a story that I'm interested in learning about, and I'm like browsing the story, and then I came to one of the URIs and this, and I really want to know more about this URI. And then I go to this URI and I get 404. And I'm sure that all of us like get this most of the time. So yeah, this is the problem of, of storytelling. So the, the resources are not persistent and web archives are not easy to use. So we, th we thought about like, okay, what about combining them to generate like stories, but persistent stories. So we're gonna use like storytelling service, services, thank you. So, uh, you know, for visualizing the stories that we will generate from archive the collections. So this is an example for what the output we targeted. So I went to Storyfy, I, sorry, I went to archive the collections, Egyptian Revolution, and I know this collection very well because I have, been, I have been studying this collection since it started in 2011, and it's running till now. So um, I went and I tried to select specific pages that may tell the story of the 14 days of the Egyptian Revolution. So hopefully my son can, you know, like find something when he grow up. So, okay, I took hours and hours for generating this, like to go through all the URIs and even, you know, I have background of the topic and I know the collection very well, and, but it took me hours to like select the best representative pages that represent the story. So how can we generate this automatically? This is uh, uh, the main thing of my topic here. So before I, I take you to the steps that how we generated this automatically, let me first like start to show you the types of the stories that can be generated from archived collections. And I know that there are many journalists here today, which I haven't expected, but I think this is would be interesting for you. So the archived collection has two dimensions. So it has a list of URIs and URIs has like, each URI has different times. So URIs and times, they can be fixed or sliding. And based on this, we came up with uh, four types of stories that can be generated. So the first type of story is a fixed page at fixed time. This is 
like if I'm, I wanna like uh, uh, now, like I requested CNN from my desktop, uh, my browser uh, in my, on my desktop machine, it will give me different representation for the page. Uh, if, you know, then if I, uh, I request this, the same page from my uh, mobile. So, you know, different representations for the same page at the same time. So this can be having like also if I'm uh, like, uh, if I'm here in the States and I type google.com, it gives me different representation other than, you know, like if I'm in the Middle East. So uh, unfortunately, this is not supported right now uh, by uh, web archiving. So we can't really generate this type of story. The second one is like when you uh, try to uh, fix the page and slice the time. So for example here, uh, if you wanna know everything about the Egyptian revolution, the key events, but from a specific website. So I don't, I, I wanna know everything as it appeared on the BBC. So I trust BBC more than Fox News, for example. So I wanna know everything uh, uh, from the BBC. Or I wanna see how a specific page, like my personal homepage, how it evolved over time, like uh, over the years. So, uh, so here I like uh, specify a specific page and then um, it gives me like the same page at different times. So uh, the third type here is when I slice the page and fix the time. And this is very interesting for humanities and you know, uh, historians because uh, here there are many studies actually they went manually through the newspapers and tried to like, you know, compare between the opinions of different newspapers uh, at, this, uh, at different, you know, like uh, times at the Egyptian revolution. So, um, so for example, uh, how the uh, newspapers react to Mubarak resigning. So, you know, like the pro-Mubarak newspapers, actually, the, yeah, th there are many case studies that showing the importance of this a story here, and this is really uh, important for journalists to compare between different newspapers uh, uh, and their coverage about a specific event. So the first one is the sliding page, sliding time, and here I just want the broadest coverage uh, possible for a specific uh, event. So this is the framework that we proposed for generating uh, these four, three types of stories. Uh, until the, the archive, like, you know, supported the, the first one. So as uh, a framework, it has uh, uh, three main components. So first, we establish a baseline of what human-generated stories would look like. And then uh, we reduce the candidate pool of archived collections, uh, sorry, of archived page, and then we select uh, best representative pages from these collections. So I'll walk you through uh, some of these uh, steps uh, very quickly. Uh, because there are much detail and here I, I'm citing like all the works that have all the details about this so you can like go and read them. So first establishing a baseline of social media stories. So we uh, grabbed like thousands of stories from Storyfy and we define the popular ones based on the views, you know, over the, the, the time uh, that they have been on the web. And then we measured like uh, the length of these stories, like what the type of the resources in these stories to get a template of, you know, how do people uh, generate the stories on social media. So what we got from this, or the summary here, is that uh, 28 like pages for the story can is a good number. Uh, so most of the popular stories on Storyfy like are around 28, and the people tend to have like more images. Uh, you know, on, uh, on their, uh, like the resources they generate or they collect uh, on Storyfy. So the second part here is to reduce the candidate, you know, like pool of archived pages that we have. And first we started by detecting the off-topic pages because the collection has off-topic pages and I'm going to show you this. This is one of the pages for uh, one of the most, you know, like famous figures at the time of the Egyptian revolution. He wasn't the presidential candidate. And this page is one of the pages of the uh, Egyptian Revolution collection at Archivet. So uh, this page has uh, like thousands of copies through time. And as you see here that this page can, it, it has, you know, like many copies that are off topic for many reasons. Like for example, it went off topic because of database error. It went off topic because uh, uh, financial uh, problems. This is the text in Arabic, and believe me, it's, uh, I'm like translating it correctly here. And 
also of, uh, and then it went on topic again and then it came back off topic because of like hacking or because of the domains loss. So there are actually many reasons for a page that to, to become off topic. Archive it provides uh, their partners with tool to you know like specify the frequency and the, uh, the depth of crawling the pages. Uh, but there is no like control uh, or there is no like notification when these pages uh, goes off topic. So we proposed or we evaluated six methods to discover these off topic pages and you know like exclude them away from the collection because I'm sure that if anyone like want to see a story they wouldn't like be happy to be presented to any of these pages. So uh, we exclude them and just select the on topic pages. And uh, yeah there are a lot of details here that you can go you know like to uh, my publication and read more about it and I'd be happy to talk about it later. And also as uh, the page happens that it can be uh, it can have like different or, or, or sorry uh, many duplicates through time because the page as uh, the content of the page you know uh, the frequency of the crawl can be like uh, weekly or daily or every few minutes and the page may not change at this time so it happens that uh, there can be a duplicate so we also uh, remove the duplicates. And then we select the best representative pages and we specified the best representative based on a quality matrix uh, here. So uh, we came up with different quality variables and don't look at the equation. <laughs> so don't worry about it. You, you don't have like to go deeply with the equation. I'm going, you know, this is much better. So this is one of the metrics here. It's the, uh, it's the, quality of the, the page itself. So some pages when the people uh, or when the pages are being crawled on Internet Archive, uh, many of them actually they are uh, like the one on the right. And I want to ask you like which one do you think it's, uh, uh, it's best or it's missing resources, the one on the right and the one on the left? So the one on the right? No, okay, so the one on the left? Okay, and the one like, <laughs> not either anyway. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you can see this by yourself, like the one, on the, the one on the left is much better than the one on the right, and this can cause a problem when we present this page and put it on, you know, any uh, visualization techniques because the missing resources can be an image, and if we want to extract this image, it would, you know, it wouldn't show up. So uh, based on like different techniques we used, uh, we detected like we, we, uh, we actually used um, techniques for calculating the damage of the page and based on this uh, we give a weight for higher weight for the, uh, the one on the left. Also uh, we know that the people love visual things so the people prefer like images and this stuff and uh, they would prefer like better a snippet like when the page you put it on uh, we choose actually storyify to uh, visualize our stories so we uh, tested the pages like uh, and choose the ones that gives us better snippet on storyify for example the one the cnn page because it's dburi it gives us better snippet it uh, succeeded in extracting the image uh, than the, uh, the the other page so uh, visualizing the stories in storyify for this we have extracted the metadata of the pages and we uh, we use the storyfy api it's, uh, it's amazing and very easy to use and uh, we override their uh, like extract uh, the, the the fav icons they, like you know do uh, uh, they extract uh, automatically uh, and also we put the date of each page uh, because this is also not extracted automatically so this is an example of automatically generated the story on a story file. So evaluation. This, you know, um, this is a research and academia. You have to evaluate everything you're doing uh, to be able to publish. So you can just like, okay, I generated these stories. So this was very hard for us to evaluate this. And, but okay, we thought about the touring, uh, you know, touring this. So, if these stories that we are generated automatically are indistinguishable from what human can generate, uh, I think we, we, we would say that we succeeded. And if like human and our generated story are better than the random generated story, so this is actually the things that we were targeting. Okay, so we used like uh, human evaluators and um, 
We use the, actually the help of uh, experts from Internet Archive and their partners. So we asked them to generate the stories out of the collections they already know, and uh, we give them the criteria of generating, you know, these collections. And actually, I went there and I, I showed them how to generate the stories. And uh, you know, also based on the template we got from uh, the, the stories we started at Storyfy, and then. Uh, we were able to get like 23 stories and then we evaluated them uh, based on like 1,000 comparison from like a human and this is, uh, oh sorry, this is how we, you know, like presented the stories like two, uh, like for example, the one in the left. Actually, I would like make a small test here, so who, uh, which one of them, like A or P, do you think that generated by humans and which one, okay, by humans, uh, A, uh, raise your hand. Okay. Uh, B, by human, raise your hand. Okay, neither of them, <laughs> because I see some people like didn't vote. Okay, so actually the one uh, that generated, uh, story A is generated automatically and story B is generated by human. So uh, this is the result of the evaluation. So it was like 50-50, and this is actually the result I have seen here, it's almost 50-50. So, uh, and also it was great that to see the automatic and the human are much better than the random stories. So hopefully, this is Yusuf now, <laughs> so hopefully uh, this is something that he would use when he grow up and after many years he would like thank me for generating this. <laughs> and you know, he wouldn't struggle to understand what happened during the Egyptian revolution because yeah, so that's it. <laughs> So all, uh, we have the code and the papers and slides uh, I have like put all together in this blog post and it has all the links for the code and the data sets that we have. So, and I can like have questions at this time.